you might have come across many such lists by Indian defense enthusiasts on social media. Of defense equipment India must procure post Operation Sindur. We have just fought a short high tempo war and it has certainly given us a lot of clarity on what worked and what did not. So what defense equipment India must develop and procure in the next 5 to 10 years timeline. My friend Avinash also asked me to compile a similar list. So here is my list. The list is focused around the Air Force because of its role in the recently conducted operation against Pakistan. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to the ARC. Before going ahead with the list, I would like to remind that about many of these equipment I have already discussed in my previous videos. I'll put all the cards up here. Do check them out for a more in-depth understanding. I have been talking about developing an indigenous jet engine in my videos since the beginning of this channel. Let me do it one more time. Engine is the most important part of the aircraft. It determines the aircraft aerodynamic performance, fuel carrying capacity, weapons load, etc. Building a jet engine is extremely complex. Only the US, UK, France and Russia produce their own engines to power their fighter jets. And China has almost cracked it with its WS-10 and WS-15 engines. We did try our hands with the development of Kaveri engine in the 1980s. The engine, though promising, didn't deliver on the required specifications. There are many reasons behind the failure of the project, starting from government's meager funding to GTRE's incompetence and DRDO's project mismanagement. But it's time we look past all this. Kaveri should be further developed and tested to power indigenous UCAVs. And government must work towards developing a new engine for fighter aircraft, completely from scratch either as a joint collaboration with a foreign partner or indigenously. There is also the GEHAL deal for manufacturing of the F414 engines in India, from where we can gain a lot of experience. We have already seen the kind of delay in LCA Mark 1A delivery due to delay in engine delivery. Then how can we depend on a foreign OEM for engines for LCA Mark 2 and AMCA? Recently on X, Hashtag Fund Kaveri Engine was trending and a lot of people showed support for an indigenous jet engine. Hope the government takes notice. In the recent Operation Sindur, the Rafals performed brilliantly. Rafals fired scalp and hammer missiles targeting Pakistani terrorist and military infrastructure with pinpoint accuracy from standoff ranges. Rafal is an extremely potent platform. But 36 is not enough. Yes, it's expensive, but it brings in a lot of technological edge too. After investing a lot into this platform, we must take it forward. We must induct at least 54 to 72 more Rafals for the Indian Air Force. In April this year, a government to government deal was signed with France for 26 Rafals for the Indian Navy. A similar deal for the IAF should be worked out. As Dassault Aviation is all set to set up production facility for Rafale fuselage, as well as MRO facilities in India. We know that the LCA Mark 1A, the true combat ready version of LCA, is now running late by more than one and a half years. The jets were supposed to start getting inducted by the Indian Air Force by March 2024, but the first one is yet to be inducted. In March this year, General Electric delivered the first F404 engine to HAL. HAL is currently undergoing final fitment of the LCA Mark 1A. 83 LCAs are currently on order and order of another 97 planes is in pipeline with 180 plus 40. A total of 220, LCA Mark 1 is going to be the mainstay of IAF. 
the production rate has to go up to 18 to 20 aircraft per year and government must push ge and hl for faster delivery of lca mark 1a to the indian air force now comes the venerable su30 mkis we are all aware of the heroics of the if su30 in operation sindur firing air launched brahmos supersonic cruise missiles and wreaking havoc in pakistan india purchased 272 su30 from russia out of which 222 were assembled by hl under transfer of technology the aircraft was named su30 mki with 272 planes su30 forms the backbone of indian air force In the 2000s when India wanted BrahMos missile on the Su30s Russia demanded huge amounts for the integration Then HAL and DRDO decided to do all the modifications on their own Now about 40 Su30 MKIs of the 222 squadron based out of Tanjore in Tamil Nadu can fire the BrahMos A The first batch of Su-30 MKI was inducted into IAF in 2002 and the last batch around 2019. IAF has also ordered 12 more Su-30s in December 2024 to make up for planes lost in accidents over the years. So in 2025 a decent number of Su-30 MKIs are fairly in new condition and the rest are about two decades old. That's why an ambitious Super Sukhoi or Super 30 plan of upgrading the Su-30 MKIs was envisaged. DAC accorded its approval for the 63000 crore rupees Super Sukhoi plan in 2023 to upgrade 84 Su-30 MKIs. The upgrade includes a new upgraded Uttam AISA radar called the Birupaksha radar, a fully digital cockpit, upgraded indigenous avionics, new weapons and many more. The upgrade plan awaits CCS approval and it must be approved in priority. It's a no-brainer that we need a fifth generation fighter aircraft now. China has already inducted its fifth generation fighter J20 in large numbers. And there are reports that Pakistan might also get the Chinese J35 early. Now India's own fifth generation fighter Amka is nowhere in the horizon. Then should we induct a foreign one? If we look at viable options, we have the American F35 and Russian Su57. But I don't think it makes strategic sense to induct either. If we induct adequate number of Rafales and invest good amounts of money into the Amka project, to accelerate its delivery timelines we don't need a foreign fifth generation fighter aircraft now government on 27th may approved the amka program execution model to be a public private partnership now what about the lca mark 2 the lca mark 2 though has great promise and potential i think we have to sacrifice the lca mark 2 The aircraft is supposed to be rolled out at the end of this year or early next year and go into serial production after 2028. But these timelines are questionable and inducting large numbers of 4.5 generation fighter aircraft in the 2030s doesn't make much sense. Then should it be scrapped? I don't think so. Because many niche technologies being developed indigenously need to be proven and LCA Mark II is the perfect platform for that. This will in a way shorten the timelines of Amka. Hence, we should restrict the LCA Mark II numbers to 4 to 5 squadrons and go full throttle on Amka. An airborne early warning and control system is what we call a force multiplier. The radar mounted on top is used to detect aircraft, ships and missiles at long ranges. And at the same time, perform as a command and control unit. to monitor the battle space India has 3 Falcon AWACS with Israeli ELW 2090 radar mounted on Russian IL76 aircraft providing 360 degree coverage though these have been upgraded from time to time the platform is now old 
India also has three DRDO made Netra AWNCs mounted on Emperor ERJ145 aircraft. Its radar provides a 240 degree coverage and a range of about 250 to 300 kilometers. Both the Netra and Falcons performed brilliantly in the 2019 skirmish with Pakistan and also in the recently conducted Operation Sindur. But the number of AWNC platforms operated by the IAF is extremely small considering the vast areas it has to look after. China operates more than 20 such platforms and Pakistan has about 9 including the Saab Area 2000 though we can't tell with certainty how many are left with Pakistan after India's operation Sindur. In March this year the DAC approved the procurement of 6 additional AWNC systems known as Nitra Mark 1A. It will be an upgraded version of the existing ones. There are also plans to induct another 6 AWNC systems with 300 degree coverage being developed by the DRDO mounted on Airbus A321 aircraft it will be known as Netra Mark 2 six of these aircraft have been procured from Air India and are currently with the IAF IAF is also looking to acquire six more advanced AWNCs with 360 degree coverage India needs at least 10 to 15 such platforms urgently hope the government takes notice A real refueler is also what we call a force multiplier because it enhances the range and endurance of aerial platforms such as fighter aircraft. With aerial refueling, aircraft can carry their full weapons load with less fuel and be refueled mid-air. With aerial refueling, fighter jets can take off from far away bases, away from enemy's gaze. Refuel mid-air, conduct operations and come back to their bases India operates six Illusion IL78 refuelers which were inducted back in 2003 now these platforms are old and are also facing serviceability issues IAF has tried to induct six more aerial refuelers at least thrice before but it has been rejected every time citing high prices IAF finally decided to go for wet leasing of flight refueling aircraft KC-135 FRA from US based military contractor Metria in March this year though wet leasing is an established practice in the industry MOD must open its purse to purchase at least 6 aerial refuelers we have seen how effective missiles can be and how india made missiles performed spectacularly well on the air to air missiles front we must induct the astra mark 2 immediately and expedite development of 300 km range SFDR based Astra Mark 3 or Gandiva missile we also need an indigenous heat seeking WBR missile to be standardized across IAF platforms similarly we need to develop a subsonic cruise missile it will be smaller lighter and more importantly much cheaper than the BrahMos Do you know a single BrahMos missile costs upward of 30 crore rupees? India's ITCM or Nirbhay program for a subsonic cruise missile is running late and it must be expedited. Similarly, development and induction of Akash NG, Kusha, MRSM etc is also extremely important. I can't emphasize the role of drones and unmanned aerial systems more in modern warfare. We are developing much of it on our own. but we need to spend more in development of unmanned aerial systems like attack drones autonomous aerial systems swarm drones and manned unmanned teaming along with all this hardware we also need to up our electronic warfare game because the warfare is evolving rapidly and we need to adapt to the changing realities and indigenization has a big role to play in it at this point considering the changing paradigm of modern warfare and evolving geopolitical realities india needs to be self sufficient in defense technology so do you agree with the list do comment below if i missed something or if you have your own wish list till then keep following the arc